thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help. If you do have an encounter to tell, send to SoCal Sasquatch Organization at gmail.com. We now have SCSO Keep On Squatching t-shirts available. See link in description below. Join the community and show it off wherever you go. Report number 62169, Class Bravo, submitted by witness on Monday, November 19th, 2018. Couple experienced large rock thrown and possible bluff charge in Inyo National Forest. Year 2018, season fall, month November, date the 10th, state California, county Inyo. Location details, near Green Lake in the Inyo National Forest. Nearest town, Bishop, California. Observe, BFRO investigator Charles Lamica transcribed the following initial report from a voice mail left on the BFRO phone system. Confidential information such as last name and phone number have been edited out. Hi, my name is Ron. I'm calling from San Diego, California. I'm a middle school math teacher or a math and special education teacher. I was recently over the three week day weekend up in the eastern Sierras hiking at about 12,000 feet. Something happened and I can't explain. I just thought I would call you guys and tell you about it if you're interested. I really can't explain it. It was bizarre, but anyways, thank you very much. Other witnesses, too. The reporting party and his girlfriend. Environment, tall pines, steep terrain. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Charles Lamica. I became aware of this case when the reporting party's voicemail was posted on the BFRO investigator's Facebook page. I volunteered to return the call. I made telephone contact with Ron on the evening of 18 November 2018, one week after the initial incident recurred. Ron is a middle school math teacher and an avid fly fisherman. He described himself as the type of guy who doesn't believe in things like ghosts or Bigfoot. He said, I'm skeptical of these things. I can't see or touch. The incident happened near Green Lake, however, has forced him to release his skepticism. His comments to me are subnized below. My girlfriend and I had a three-day weekend, so we decided to do some fly fishing up on Green Lake. I live in SoCal, as it is a seven-hour drive for us to reach South Lake in the Inyo National Forest. When we hiked about three miles up to Green Lake, I've been to Green Lake many times in the past. The elevation at South Lake is about 9,000. The trail to Green Lake takes you up past 11,000 feet. So it's pretty steep in places, and there are a lot of switchbacks on the trail. We hiked up to Green Lake only to find it was totally frozen over. We decided to hike back down towards another lake in the area. And at one point in our hike, we stopped to rest and eat some snacks. While we were there, I had an eerie feeling. It caused me to feel cold and shaky and nervous. As we were sitting there, we suddenly heard a noise of something flying through the air. I looked up and saw a huge rock, which is probably weighed about 45 pounds, coming from above us. The rock landed on the trail about 25 yards away from us. It wasn't rolling down the hillside. Its trajectory indicated to me it had been thrown down the hillside. At about the same time, in, instant, uh, we heard a very distinct animal-like grunting noise, but it was far louder than any animal grunt I've ever heard. We also detected a really foul smell. I particularly remember this foul smell because one moment we were just breathing really fresh mountain air and the next moment there was this awful smell. About the same time, we could hear heavy footsteps coming down the hillside toward us. The terrain is very steep in that area, many tall pines. We couldn't see very far above us, but we could hear something was coming down towards us. I've encountered many bears in the area in the past, and I immediately grew concerned a bear was approaching us. I yelled something like, it's a bear! The whole thing was so frightening and unexpected that we started running. My girlfriend left jacket, my sunglasses, and our food there, and we just started running down the switchback trail. 
The jacket and sunglasses cost over $100, and we never went back for them. As we kept running down the switchbacks, we could hear the heavy footsteps following us. Whatever it was, it didn't stay on the trail and follow the switchback as we did. Instead, it cut straight down the hillside, and it just movements were loud enough for us to hear it. We ran for about five minutes before realizing the thing was no longer following us. We just went back to the trailhead, got in our car, and left. This was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in my life. I'm confused and puzzled by the whole thing. I'm not the kind of guy who believes in things like ghosts or Bigfoots, but I can't explain what happened to us. That's why I reached out to you guys at the BFRO. In many, in my follow-up questions, I asked Ron about the rock he saw flying through there. He said he guessed it was about 45 pounds. He felt it was definitely too big for a human to have thrown. It wasn't smooth and round, but was more angular and sharp edges, which he assumes is why he heard it flying through the air before he actually saw it. Ron also stated that in hindsight, although he initially was afraid there was being stalked by a bear, he felt the whole thing was unlike any normal bear behavior he had ever experienced. He now believes it was not a bear. During my conversation, I found Ron's story to be believable and compelling. I got the impression that he is a person of analytic mindset, which ex experienced something unusual and now wants to understand why, how, of what happened. He didn't seem to be looking for attention, but wanted information instead. I explained to Ron that Sasquatches will sometimes engage in territorial displays such as rock throwing, tree shaking, or angry vocalizations. <clears throat> Plus, charges are, have also been reported in which squatches seem to be intent on chasing people away from the area. Based on Ron's description of the moving noises he heard, I suspect he and his girlfriend were on the receiving end of a bluff charge. After seeing a rock thrown in their direction, they heard a loud grunting noise, smelled a foul order, odor, and heard heavy footsteps coming th their way. I find it interesting that they ran down the switchbacks. The maker of all this commotion ran straight down the hillside, cutting across the switchbacks, which makes it be believe this was a bluff charge rather than some type of predatory behavior. If a Sasquatch or any other large animal was running straight downhill, it would have easily caught up the humans who were sticking to the switchback trail. Since it never did catch up with Ron and his girlfriend, I can only assume that the suspect... Sasquatch was merely trying to scare them away rather than want to actually catch up with them. When you find the signs of Sasquatch in so many areas of the world, it will absolutely make your head spin. Or at a minimum, you will ask yourself, what the heck is this thing? Red glowing eyes. Many reports of red glowing eyes in which the eyes are reported to be sometimes orange or white usually seen at the eight foot level but sometimes reported as low as a foot off the ground when Bigfoot tries not to be seen. Many people see the red eyes peering through windows or tree lines and shifting back and forth. The eyes can be yellow, green, or blue too. Squatch eyes illuminate at night and give them outstanding night vision abilities. Report number 2115, Class Alpha. Date, May 19, 1994. Nearest town, Boulder, Utah. Observed, in June 1996, I was hiking in the Escalante Wilderness on a bench between the Gulch and Deer Creek. There are a number of stony rises between the two areas, and my friend and I had to cross the bench in order to make camp at Deer Creek. As we hiked in a westward direction, the sun was directly overhead. I was the first to notice the movement at the top of the rise. We were less than a mile from the top and pointed it out to my companion. We wondered what it could be. I have hiked in this area and never seen anyone up on the bench during this time of day over the previous 15 years. And though this had a human shape, it was too large and it was white. I mean, paper white, not ca Caucasian. The creature appeared to be pacing as it looked for something. Suddenly, 
I became very aware it had spotted us as it ducked behind the rocky outcroppings and was obscured from our view. As we were hiking toward the area to cross the bench, we observed as we got closer that the area where the creature stood that it was on the highest point and would require all of our climbing skills to reach. Not knowing what it was, if it was dangerous or wanted to be left alone, or if it was even there any longer, and being nearly exhausted from our hike and almost out of water, I decided we would hike over the bench and down to Deer Creek. About a half of a mile down the westward slope, we both had that feeling that we were being watched. We both turned and looked up to, to that area where we had previously sighted the creature, and it was watching us again, then quickly ducked down so we could not see it. I wrote about it in my journal, which I have kept for many years, but am writing from memory now. I never thought of this as being a Bigfoot sighting as I hadn't heard anyone ever describe a white Bigfoot. But a friend of mine, who is a Bigfoot enthusiast, directed me to this site. I am still not sure what it was, though I am relatively sure it wasn't human. Too big and entirely white. Also noticed, no, other witnesses, two witnesses hiking. Time and conditions, this happened about 1,300 to 1,400 hours. It was clear and dry, and the area of the sighting was clear of trees or brush. Stone formations did obscure the view of the creature. Environment. This was between Deer Creek and the Gulch, north of the Escalante River, but south of Boulder. Report number 56735, Class Alpha. State, Arkansas. Location details, Batesville Pike begins just past the North Little Rock Airport, Remount Road. The sighting occurred just before the first major curve if you are traveling south on Batesville Pike. I saw the creature on the Camp Robinson side of the road. This area is strictly off limits and signs are clearly posted. Nearest town, North Little Rock. Nearest road, Batesville Pike Road. Observed. I was driving south on Batesville Pike Road on my way to work. There are woods on both sides of this road with a tall chain link fence surrounding the woods on both sides. The right hand side of the road is part of Camp Robinson. Just past the fence there is a fire break before the tree line begins. I had just driven around a sharp curve and due to the curve I was driving pretty slow. There are lots of deer in this area, and I am typically looking to see if they are any close by. There's a small creek bed in the curve with a large culvert running under the road connecting both sides of the street in that area. Just past the curve, I saw a tall, upright, black figure. It was about 10 yards past the beginning of the tree line. This creature was walking at an angle through the woods towards the creek. I saw his right profile and the back of him. It appeared to have arms which were hanging at his side. There are lots of trees in this area so parts of his profile were blocked at times. All of the leaves are off the trees at this time of the year so I had a pretty clear view. He appeared to be six to seven feet tall with black hair. I'm not exactly sure what I saw but I know that it wasn't a deer. This road has a pretty high amount of traffic in the morning and is highly guarded by Camp Robinson. Also noticed, we have had drastic weather changes throughout the week. There was a severe thunderstorm with hail and heavy rains just a couple of days before the sighting. The day after the storm, we had a high temperature of around 80 degrees, very unusual for this time of winter. The following day, the temperature dropped drastically with wind chills in the 20s and 30s. Other witnesses. There were no other witnesses at the time I was alone in my vehicle. Other stories. Prior to this incident, I have not personally heard of any other sightings in this area. My husband suggested that I report my sighting on this website. 
I discovered it after viewing this website that there have been other sightings in this area. Time and conditions, I saw this creature at 7.40 a.m. It was a bright, clear morning. The sun had been up for about 40 minutes. The temperature was in the early to mid 40s. Environment, this area is heavily wooded. However, all the leaves were off the trees. There is a small creek close to the location of the siding. There is a fire break between the fence and the tree line. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Tal H. Branco. The investigator met with the witness and her husband at the siding location about noon on February 18, 2017. At the time of her sighting, she was driving south on Batesville Pike. On the western edge of the highway's right-of-way, there is a security fence built and maintained by the Camp Robinson Military Training Base. Just inside the fence, there is a clear firebreak patrol road that is approximately 20 feet wide. The area beyond the cleared area is thickly forested. At the time of the sighting, the leaves were gone from the trees, and in the particular location of the sighting, there is thin understory vegetation. The witness described the animal as a tall, stoutly built, big foot-like biped walking briskly northwest towards Spring Creek. She specifically stated it was walking erect, with its arms hanging loosely by its sides. She said that it was covered from head to foot in black hair. It never turned to look toward the road, so her view of it was its right side. Spring Creek flows underneath the road through large diameter culverts within a few yards of her view of the creature. Heavy rain shortly after the witness's sighting would have erased any track evidence of the creature's passage through the area. It was also noted that the security fence had been knocked down by out-of-control vehicles at both the Spring Creek culverts and the Miles Creek Bridge, which is located about one-half mile further north of the siding location. There is nothing to prevent large animals of any kind from leaving the security fenced area of that military base to more base property on the east side of the road, which is not fenced and is heavily forested as well. The writer has personally received and investigated several reports of sightings of Bigfoot-like creatures from and around the perimeter of Camp Joseph T. Robinson. Some of the base property is open to hunters with the required paid permits. Most of the encounter reports were from hunters. After hearing the witness's very detailed and sincere account of the incident, I concluded that she is a credible observer. Report number 56202, Class Bravo. Year 2015. State, Kentucky. Observed. It was opening day of modern gun deer season in Logan County, Kentucky, November 14, 2015. My husband took me to my deer stand at the edge of the hayfield. There was no moon, and I couldn't see much of anything in front of me. I waited until he left in the old jeep and continued to wait for approximately 10 to 15 minutes before I turned on the red bill light on my cap to load my gun. I loaded three shells into my 243, then turned off my bill light. Within a minute, I hear a rustle on the ground to my left and slowly turn my head in the direction of the sound. I saw two red lights like eyes approximately 30 feet away and I judged the red lights to be 8 to 10 feet off the ground. I thought for a second that I was seeing spots before my eyes from my red bill light. I rubbed my eyes and blinked a couple of times thinking I needed to clear my eyes. The lights were steady for a few seconds, then blinked twice, like I had done. I was wondering what was going on, thinking another hunter had walked up to my stand. Then I heard loud movement in the leaves, as if it were moving up to the old road approximately 50 yards away. I could not make out a shape, but as it neared what I considered close to the old road, it stopped and started a low, woo sound. 
that increased to a very loud whoop. Then I was scared. I have hunted for many years, and I have never heard an animal make that sound. I clicked the safety off my gun, but by that time, I could hear it making its way along the old road ridge heading toward our cattle barn. Also noticed, after my husband left me at my stand, he drove to our cattle barn approximately one-fourth of a mile, where he left the jeep and walked to his stand toward the bottom next to the river. He was afraid that he would have trouble finding the stand and turned on his red light. He saw red lights that he thought was stand indicators, but as he neared the stand, he saw the lights blink and heard something move away. Neither of us knew what the other had experienced until we came back to the cabin about noon. He said, well, I think I had a Bigfoot encounter. I said, let me tell you about mine. Time and conditions, 4.30 a.m., no moon, complete darkness, weather was cold and clear environment in a wooded area next to an open hay field. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Jim Wigginton. Talk to Jean via phone and she seems to be a very sincere and honest individual that was not sure what was going on that morning. Her husband left her at the tree stand, then drove further on down. She then climbed up to the tree stand and switched on her red light to load her rifle. Then after turning off the light, she heard a rustle in the leaves 30 feet away and noticed two red lights about 8 to 10 feet off the ground. She then blinked tw twice and the red eyes then blinked twice. This was a shock to her. Then she took off the rifle's safety after hearing a low whoop that became a very loud whoop. It then started to walk down an old road away from her towards her husband's stand. That month, while mending a fence, rocks were thrown at her until she threw rocks back and said, I know you're there. Another time in November, she saw a large bipedal figure walk over a ridge in the pasture field some distance away. The color difference from their cows attracted her to it. This area is about three miles from where I had my encounter on the same creek, but mine was in August of 2014. Her husband noticed red eye glow that blinked twice while at his tree stand some distance away. She said the animal would have had time to get to her husband's stand by going over the ridge, but wasn't sure it was the same one. Report number 59757, Class Bravo. Year 2018, State, Nebraska. Observed. I was northeast of Macy, Nebraska, along the Missouri River, taking part in an expedition hosted by members of the Omaha Indian Tribe. We were on the Omaha Reservation. These tribal members say they've had many sightings in the hilly bluff zone extending for miles along the west flank of the Missouri River Basin. Five of us had decided to take a day hike to see a possible X structure. As we started up the path, it became known that to get to the X, we'd have to veer off the main path and bushwhack through the weeds. Two people did this while three of us decided to stay on the clear but muddy path. I still have never seen this X, but pictures are available. As we headed up the trail, one of my Native American companions said he was hearing movement in the woods to our right. At this point, we could not see very far off. The path as trees and brush blocked the view. I did not hear the movement. We continued forward and came to an area where trees had been cut down in the past. We could not see maybe 40 to 50 yards back into the forest. Two of us looked to our right as soon as we made it to this clearer area and immediately saw movement. I saw a long light brown object that was swinging downward from a horizontal position. It was not indicative of any other animal that I can think of and was bent slightly at an apparent elbow. I could not see a hand because of the brush. At the time of the sighting, the other witness started telling us what he just saw. He said, I just saw one, and described seeing the whole upper body of a light brown Sasquatch. Apparently, when it noticed us, 
it started to drop down and move to its right, our left, behind cover. He said as it was ducking down, the arm had swung way up in the air and back down, and he demonstrated. His description and demonstration exactly matched what I had seen. He did not know that I had also seen it as he was telling me his story. I took a picture of the area where the sighting happened. This subject was behind and to the right of a stick pointing upward. On July 27, 2018, I revisited the location with BFRO investigator T. Bell and hacked my way back into this spot. We determined that the top of the stick is about 11 feet high, making the top of the swinging arm at around 9 feet tall. On the day of the sighting, I was not prepared to bushwhack back into the site where the subject was seen. I was better prepared when we returned on July 27th. I have already done an interview with the BFRO investigator just after our recreation attempt. This subject was much larger than me. It could very easily be 10 plus feet as it was already ducking away when I saw it. Also noticed I had audio recorder set up in the area and recorded possible vocalizations the following morning at around 5 a.m. Other witnesses, two witnesses saw the creature, three people were present. Other stories, there are many encounters in this general area, including a long distance daytime sighting just yesterday, July 28th. The proud native people of this area seemingly tend to keep their stories within their own community. I am very blessed to have been able to hear the details of many of these encounters. Time and conditions, 1.30 p.m. on a clear and very hot sunny day. Temperature was above 90 degrees at the time. Environment. This is a heavily forested area bordering the Missouri River. Lots of hills, ravines, and trees. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator T.K. Bell. In addition to the report, this individual is involved in the research of Sasquatch and uses his own audio equipment to gather audio evidence. Further details, it was hard to tell the length of the arm, especially with the movement of it swinging down. There was no odd smell other than the initial movement. No other sounds were made when it was leaving the area. The area is heavily wooded with trees and brush and is along the Missouri River, which separates the Iowa and Nebraska state lines. There are many ravines, farms, and prairie areas, plus an abundance of wildlife, deer, rabbits, squirrels, birds, and fish in the river. I find the witness to be credible. He has attended many BFRO expeditions and has for several years been doing audio placement to get audio evidence for the research of Sasquatch. Matt Moneymaker's notes. This is the type of area in the Midwest where Sasquatches will find refuge in the winter and early spring. In those seasons they will seek dense brush cover, ideally the gullies of hilly terrain. Dense brushy zones in the gullies of hill terrain is the best natural protection from freezing winds unless you're inside a cave or burrow, etc. In late spring through early fall, there is enough cover in the form of growing corn for Sasquatches to venture far out from their winter strongholds. They can stay out there among cornfields and not return at night to a naturally brushy zone. But the Omaha Indians, in contact with the BFRO, say they have encounters almost year-round in some part of the bluffs overlooking the Missouri River Basin. So this one and its family may be sticking around most of the time because of the abundance of deer within nightly walking distance of the Report hilly number bluffs. Number 48665 zone. Class Alpha, Year 2015, State Louisiana, Observed, 100% Bigfoot, Melville, Louisiana, approximately 1.15 on a rainy day. Bigfoot walked out of the tree line, took five steps to the right, and back into the tree line about 100 yards away from our house. Also noticed broken tree limbs. Other witnesses, one. 
Other stories, yes. Time and conditions, 1.15 p.m. Environment, rainy. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Michael Janakis. I spoke with the husband H and wife W. Location is near Melville, Louisiana, northeast of Lafayette. They are on a property that has 70 acres of land, most of which is heavy forest and swamplands. Their land is adjacent to a bayou and is close to a major river, the Atchafalava River. Their land is also located near Atchafalava Wildlife Refuge. Background, both H and W are in their 30s. They are from the Ozarks originally. They moved to this property earlier this year. The property had been vacant for seven years prior following the death of the elderly female owner. To H's knowledge, there are no reports that he's aware of from the lady or nearby residents. The property was vacant for seven years simply because of the remote location. The report, Monday, 5-11-15 at 1.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There is a light rain. Home alone, W is standing outside on the west end of the home smoking a cigarette. She then hears a high-pitched, short-duration whoop near the tree line 105 yards to her southwest. The distance was subsequently measured by H. Between her and the tree line is a one to two foot high meadow. The hoop causes her to drop her cigarette. As she's picking it up from the wet ground, she then hears a very low pitched, deep, manly whoop coming from what she felt was the same general location of the first whoop just seconds prior. She looks up and sees a seven and a half to eight foot tall Sasquatch stepping out from the tree line. It used both arms to push the trees aside in order to step out. As it steps out, W sees the thigh muscle flexing. It has dark brown hair, but it wasn't fur-like. It's just hairy. You could see skin beneath the hair in many places. The top of the head has shorter hair, but the back of the head is longer hair. She describes it as looking like a mullet, very muscular, no neck. As it steps out fully in one stride, it immediately turns to its right and takes five long steps, swinging its arms before it turns right and steps back into the forest. The witness repeats several times that the oddest part of this whole event was that the Sasquatch never once looked up, not at her, the house, or the meadow. It purposely looked down the entire time. W felt as if to imply it was not a threat. As it took the five steps, it would lean back as it brought its foot up, then lean forward into the step. When H went to the area to investigate it, he said the ground had sticker bushes two feet tall and four feet across, which would account for the deliberate steps. He also added there was no way for him to make those same steps. It was too far of a stride with the sticker bushes in the way. It walked somewhat hunched over, long arms, hands lower than the knees. She described the shoulder width as being massive, two and a half times the width of her husband, 5'11", 205 pounds. When the squatch was stepping back into the tree line, it had to duck slightly under a thick tree limb. H later measured the limb to be seven and a half feet above the ground. W called H, who was several hours away at school in Baton Rouge, and asked him to come home immediately. H said she's a very level-headed person and she's never made a request like this, so he came home immediately. When H went to the area, he stayed on the phone with W, who was able to guide him into the exact spot. H said he could not see one to two feet into the trees due to dense, tall underbrush. As he stepped into the tree line, he could see an area of trampled down grass and broken four feet long limbs that had been stacked. He said you could see where something had been pacing and it looked like it had been going for a long time. There were also limbs broken eight to nine feet above. Some, H said, were greater than six inches in diameter. 
No prints, no hair was visible. The area inside the tree smelled like wet dog. He said his house was visible from within this hidden area, and that was all he could imagine it was for. No discernible trail could be seen inside the tree line. He said the entire time he was inside the tree line, he felt uneasy. He described it not as being scared or being hunted or anything, rather that this was something else's area and he didn't belong there. Last night, his dog started barking for the first time and went running out to that same spot at the tree line but wouldn't go into the trees. After a minute, they suddenly stopped and came running back to the house. Today, they will not go anywhere near the trees. There are many cows in the area. H says one of them died two weeks ago, and the rancher had let it lay there to rot. H wonders if that bad stink of the decaying cow somehow attracted the squatch. He says there are lots of deer and hogs in the woods and swamp areas, as well as horses and cows. There are bears, but he's been told they've all been given neck collars that are visible for tracking their movement. He says he and his wife are familiar with bears and that what W saw was not a bear. This is a follow-up report for number 48665H. Sunday, July 3, 2016, hot and humid summer, late afternoon, H, his wife, and his wife's friend are riding horses at their ranch when one of the young dogs gets accidentally trampled and killed. H's daughter, 14 years old, D, was particularly fond of the dog and was distraught. She jumped on a quad and drove it down a dirt road a distance from the home. She stopped in a remote area next to the bayou and surrounded by forest. It was now dusk and was beginning to get dark. Clear skies, no moon lit, a new moon that day less than 2% visible. H and his wife's friend were trying to dig a grave for the dog near the house. He mentioned the ground being very hard. From a distance that H estimates to be 200 to 300 yards into the forest, both H and the friend hear a loud, powerful scream coming from the forest. H had a difficult time describing the scream. He said he's never heard anything like it. It was not an Ohio howl type of scream. His exact words were that as it was like a long screech scream. He said it was so loud that it echoed and drowned out the sound of a nearby oil pump. I directed him to several websites with recorded screams to see if he could find something close to it. Interesting, however, D was closer to the direction of the scream, but did not hear it. At the same time H was burying the dog, D is still parked at the remote spot. She was sobbing loudly. She tried to call her girlfriend, Paige, to tell her about the dog, but she got no signal. She continued to cry, and in frustration, she took off her hat and hit the quad with it. That's when she heard a knock on a nearby tree. H did not know how loud it was. Need to ask D. She turned around and scanned the forest in the direction she thought the knock came from. Her first scan, she saw nothing, but on her second scan, she saw a Bigfoot staring back at her. He was 15 feet away, peering from behind a tree, both eyes, most of head, and most of shoulder. She said she was terrified and did not move. After a few seconds, the Bigfoot slowly stepped out from behind the tree, its entire body and head visible to her. After a few moments, it turned to the left and slowly, calmly walked into the forest. Not taking her eyes off of the Bigfoot, D started up the quad. H says it's not in the best mechanical shape and is very loud, but the sound did not startle the creature. It looked back briefly, but never slowed or accelerated its stride. She described the creature as being huge, with massive shoulders. She said she could clearly make out the balls of its shoulders and they were very muscular. She did describe to H that it had a visible neck, which is interesting. 
hair everywhere except around its eyes and on its hands. She said the eyes were huge and had no white. They were dark colored and she could make out a smaller pupil. She said it looked and moved like it would be very fast and limber. H went back to, sighting, to the sighting spot that night with neighbor and D. They measured the height to be seven and a half to eight feet tall. He said there was what he thought was a significant amount of saliva on the tree in the spot the mouth would have been. He collected it with a knife and cellophane wrap. It's probably not a viable sample. He could not find footprints, but there were heavy depressions in the forest litter. He has been fascinated with the Bigfoot subject since his wife's sighting last year and thought to bring a banana and some tomatoes to the site with him. He left the tomatoes on a stump and the banana in the crook of the tree it had stood behind. Three days later, the banana and tomatoes were missing. At the stump where the, where the tomatoes were located, there was a new pile of nine rocks. He also says he's since found the stem of the banana peel on top of sticks that were placed in a crook of a tree nearby. Report number 59159, Class Bravo. Year 2018, State, Pennsylvania. Observed. I was at our job site tending to a portable generator and turbo heater. I was sitting in my truck almost asleep when I heard leaves crunching over in the woods. At first I thought it was a deer, but as it got closer I could tell it was on two feet. I heard it going back and forth several times almost like pacing. Then I could see in the moonlight with the footsteps crunching the leaves that it definitely was on two feet. Then it stops. All of a sudden I heard a loud bang off the tank. I think it had to have thrown a rock because of how loud the bang was on the tank. Then I heard more footsteps come even closer now. As I'm trying to look into the woods where I last saw movement, I realized it was standing right at the edge of the woods right beside my truck. I was paralyzed. It must have seen me at this point as it was sitting there. As I tried to get my composure, I reached down in the door of my truck for my handgun. As I looked back up, I could hear it walking off in the leaves. I started the truck and turned the headlights towards the woods but didn't see or hear anything more. This was the most terrifying five to six minutes of my life. Other witnesses, I was alone. Other stories, no. Time and conditions, 2.02 a.m. It was a well-lit, moonlit, three-quarter moon, mostly clear sky, 23 degrees Fahrenheit cold, the environment, it was wooded property clearing around a job site. 84 feet tall water tanks. Follow-up investigation report by BFRO investigator Amy Boo. I interviewed this witness over the phone and then met him in person. I found him to be extremely credible. He is a construction foreman in Pennsylvania. When this encounter took place, he was at a construction site where he had to sit in his truck all night while waiting to make sure that the generator didn't stop working. The generator was heating up some water that had frozen. He had to make sure the fire stayed lit. He had set his alarm to go off every half hour, and in the meantime, he was bundled up and would sleep in the driver's side of his truck with the seat back. The truck was shut off because he wasn't able to dim the light lights with it on. It was cold, but there was no snow on the ground. He stated that before his alarm went off at the next set time, he was awakened by what he thought was something pushing on and moving the truck. He realized that he couldn't see the flame of the generator, as if something was blocking it. But when he looked again, it was clear. He didn't immediately notice anything else. And although he was startled, he started to go back to sleep. Then he heard something walking into the nearby woods. He could hear the thing pacing back and forth. Then he heard something hit the generator with a large boom. He assumed it was a rock. A figure stepped out of the woods. He saw the profile and there was no muzzle. It looked 
uniform in color and it was tall. He claimed that he knew right away that it was too tall to be a person. He tried to get his bearings and went to grab his phone from the seat next to him and he accidentally hit it across the seat onto the floor. When he straightened up from trying to grab his phone and his gun, then he said the figure turned to face him. When he got to this part of telling me the story, he was visibly shaken. His wife and dog were with him while he was telling the story to me. They were upset that he was upset. He said it was then that he realized how massive this thing was. The shoulder width was beyond anything that he could comprehend, and he knew that it was looking at him. At this point in the interview process, I asked an investigator who I had brought along with me to go and stand where he pointed out that the figure had been standing. This investigator is about six feet tall, and when she stood there, the witness was again visibly upset. He said the size of the creature compared to this investigator was so much bigger that he couldn't comprehend it. Using a measuring tape against a branch he remembered its head hitting, he estimated it to be between eight to nine feet tall. It was, however, the width and bulk of it that had really impressed him. The witness reported that the figure soon moved back into the woods and that he stuck it out as long as he could through the rest of the night. This happened around 2 a.m., but he was on high alert and didn't sleep anymore. As he was collecting himself after giving me his report, I asked his wife if he had said anything to her after this had happened. She said he had texted her and called her right after the figure left and that he was extremely upset both then and when he came home. He didn't go to work for the next few days and this guy never misses work. He is just a normal hard-working guy who had an experience he wasn't looking for and that he still can't explain. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe below so we can expand our Squatch search with your help.